feared is the whole Southeast Pacific, hardened by the campaigns in China. Hong Kong has stood as a... <laughs> Hong Kong was British. Manila is America. But the Japanese are impartial. It is Manila's turn. mightiest fortress in all the East, Singapore, key to Malaya, key to Java, key to the wealth of the Indies, looks seaward for trouble. But behind the unsuspecting back of the British, the Japanese begin their creeping assault. Deep in the jungle that is thought to be impenetrable, the enemy comes crawling down on Singapore. The jungle does not stop them. The scattered defenders do not stop them. Nothing stops them. Tiger of Malaya, General Yamashita, forces the conqueror's demands on the helpless English. With hope gone, with defenses crumbled, with no aid in sight, General Percival signs away the greatest outpost in the British Empire. Two months later, 30... Far away in Washington, President Roosevelt strikes the only note of relief in the unending Allied dirge. But there is no real relief. Corregidor, America's last stand in the Philippines. 
and common suffering. A new bond of brotherhood is forged between Americans and Filipinos. General Wainwright surrenders all armed forces to the enemy. The Philippines have fallen. In five horrible months, the enemy, like an octopus, has stretched his tentacles across vast spaces of the Pacific, devouring prize after prize to satiate his appetite for conquest. The day after Corregidor's fall comes the Battle of the Coral Sea. American carrier planes pounce on a Japanese invasion force out to engulf Fort Moresby and cut off Australia. For the first time in history, men of war fight it out without once sighting each other. When the battle is over, the Japanese retreat. One of their carriers has been sunk. Two others are badly damaged. The United States loses the carrier Lexington. You know it, but the tide is turning. Out from America, across the enormous ocean waste, transport stream toward Australia with supplies and men. The build-up begins. who will dominate the coming struggle emerge. General MacArthur in Australia and in Pearl Harbor, Admiral Nimitz. As the Japanese prepare to strike again, Nimitz makes a fateful decision. He gathers available ships together in the Central Pacific, deducing that Midway is the enemy's objective. Nimitz appoints Admiral Spruance to command a carrier task force in the defense of Midway Island, 1,000 miles west of Pearl Harbor. 3,500 miles east of Tokyo. Midway itself sends incessant patrols in search of the elusive Japanese. Massive forces are converging on this pinpoint in the ocean, which the enemy wants as his eastern outpost. For America, it is the last century between Japan and Hawaii. The Pacific War is focused on a coral atoll, six miles in diameter. Day after day, hour after hour, planes search and search and search. And then, through a gap in the clouds, Japanese troop transports. But what the spotting plane does not see is the Japanese striking force which outnumbers the Americans in every class. Battleships, cruisers, carriers, destroyers, planes. The same carriers that raped Pearl Harbor are headed for Midway. Akagi, Kaga, Saryu, Hiryu. Aboard the flagship Akagi, Admiral Nagumo, who directed the attack on Pearl Harbor, plots his new mission. Execute an aerial attack on Midway, destroying all enemy forces in preparation for landing. The pilots assigned to the task are also veterans of December 7th. The elite of fleet air arm, the pride of the Imperial Navy. Confident, fanatical, they prepare to slaughter the Marines defending Midway and add the island to their unbroken string of conquest.
midway blazes, but midway stands. Far at sea, Admiral Spruance increases speed to 25 knots and prepares to close the Japanese. Admiral Fletcher, officer in tactical command, orders. Proceed southwesterly and attack enemy carriers when definitely located. The tireless search planes hit the jackpot. The enemy carriers are finally located. Midway has been badly hit. But Midway comes back fighting. So loaded with fighting equipment is this stationary aircraft carrier, little room is left for its natives, the Goonie Bird. Midway hits the Japanese with all it has. Every available land-based plane is sent against the enemy fleet. Not one hit. The Japanese come through the attack unchecked. The invasion of Midway is still on. 5,000 troops stand by for landing orders. But Spruance's task force is closing in. The Admiral now knows the approximate location of the enemy carriers. It is June the 4th, 1942, a moment for command decision. Pilots are summoned to the ready room and briefed. Crewmen are called to station. Spruance has cast the die. The task force will risk an all-out attack against superior odds, hoping to surprise the enemy, hoping to annihilate the enemy. three American carriers, in Hornet, in Enterprise, in Yorktown. The young and the brave prepare for battle. Some will fall in flames from the sky they seek to dominate. Some will perish in the ocean, whose mastery they seek to win. But the ritual of launching takes its disciplined course, as precise and ordered as a ballet. the approaching American fleet, prepares for another strike on Midway Island. Below decks, the pilots are at ease, while their planes, which are armed with torpedoes, in case the United States Navy is sighted, are rearmed for another bombing mission. Poor intelligence is an enemy blunder, a godsend to sports. 
But all-out attack begins with all-out disaster. Hornet's Torpedo Squadron 8 runs into murderous enemy flak and swarming Zero fighters. A Torpedo 8's 15 planes. All are destroyed. And not one hit is scored. Out of a total of 41 torpedo planes from three carriers, only six survive. The news is grim. But the attack continues. The dive bombers go in. Enemy defenses, off balance from the earlier assault, are unequal to the new attack. The carriers are hit. In two amazing minutes, the course of battle is reversed. It is the Americans who inflict the slaughter. The Japanese crumble. smashed and sinking. Kaga, smashed and sinking. The American submarine Nautilus jumps into the fight and sights the smoking carrier Soryu. Torpedoes from below are added to bombs from above. Or you smashed and sinking. One Japanese carrier off to the north remains untouched. The heel you. A scouting plane finally spots the Americans. The Japanese lash back. Detection gear picks up the avenging enemy. 30 to 40 planes approaching from west-southwest, 40 miles out. Hell is on the wing. take off to meet the attack. From ship and sky, the Japanese encounter fierce defense, but they press their assault to the limit.
dime. But retaliation is on the way. Planes from the Enterprise ring down the curtain on the Battle of Midway. Here you, smashed and sinking. Four Japanese carriers, gone. And with them, their irreplaceable pilots. Yorktown is dead. But so are Japanese plans to dominate the Eastern Pacific. Admiral Spruance, his ships, and his men have won the Battle of Midway, one of the most decisive victories in naval history. The Imperial Japanese Navy 